Welcome back to the next in a series of videos demonstrating how easy it is to install and configure Customizer Lite. This is David Bell, Senior Development Manager and a member of the squad responsible for the Customizer technology at HCL Software. Today we are looking at part 3 of the series, installing and configuring the Customizer Lite services. As in the previous video, there will be a mixture of a few slides plus some live demonstration of the installation and configuration process. Let's get started. Customizer Lite is provided as a single zip file package containing the necessary components to install and configure. There are three Docker images that we mentioned in part one of the video series, the App Registry Client, the App Registry Service, and MW Proxy. There are some configuration files that provide a default implementation with a small amount of customer-specific information that needs to be added, such as host names for connections and Nginx. And lastly, there are some shell scripts that aid in the Docker image load, tagging, and startup. As in the last video, the installation and configuration will be demonstrated, but just before we see that, here is a quick rundown of the activities to be performed. All of the necessary information is listed in the Public Connections Knowledge Center. Just search for Customizer Lite. First of all, put the zip file on the machine and unzip it into the preferred file system location. For the demo, I'm just going to use the local file system of the Docker machine. Directory ownership and permissions can be modified to suit your needs. There are some examples in the documentation, but are just as necessary. A script is used to easily load and tag the Docker images in the repository, and once that is done, there are just a couple of environment variables to set, and we'll want a sample customization to test things later. Lastly, we can do a test launch and run the containers temporarily to make sure they start up successfully and look at their runtime and log output. Let's go do it. So here we are on the machine, and just to show you that I've already put some files here the uh, customizer light zip file package and the hello world sample files sample customization files and so the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have uh, unzip installed so that I can unzip that zip package uh, good and then I'm in the uh, SRV directory and so I'm going to unzip the files here and uh, that will create a customizer light subdirectory. So let's uh, unzip that package. Use sudo to uh, make sure I have permission to write the files. And what we should see here is customizer light, and within this, uh, full subdirectories, and you see the ownership is uh, root. Um, <clears throat> sorry, the other thing I want to do now is to go into the customizations directory while I'm here and copy in the uh, hello world sample files from that temp directory. And there's just the uh, JSON application definition and the single JavaScript file. <clears throat> we'll be able to use that for testing at a later point. Just to talk about permissions, let's look at those again. So they're owned by root. Um, but we want to make sure that the, um, the containers have access to the uh, right directories. The um, customizations and the data settings directories uh, need write permission because the uh, the uh, app registry service will write some some data uh, into those directories from a configuration point of view so we uh we need to set these i'm just going to copy and paste some permission settings here so i'm going to set customizations read write i'm going to set the um the data directory read execute but then underneath that the settings directory I want to make read write and the images directory should make sure that is read execute it's the um, tar images that are in there the docker images need to be read to be loaded into the uh, docker registry and then the 
script directory uh, contains just some configuration information, some shell scripts. So we make those um, read, write, execute. Let's take a quick look at that. I think we should be good there. So the next thing we want to do is look in the script directory and we should find in there some shell script files, um, <clears throat> set up images in particular is the one that we use to load the Docker images into Docker. And let's just make sure that Docker is running. There's no images there already. Okay, I'm gonna run the setup images script. I can type. Uh, first parameter is Docker registry and you would ordinarily here put the host name and any port to your centralized Docker registry. Um, I'm not using the centralized registry, I'm just going to use the local Docker repository. Um, so I'm going to reference this as localhost and that will just become part of the image name, as you will see. Script expects a username and password though, so I have to put in dummy values for those. You would put in your regular username and password for the access to the Docker registry. And then the stack parameter, ST, uh, is used to indicate which of the Docker images uh, are loaded into Docker. So the three that we need are App Registry Client, App Registry Service, and MW Proxy. And this CS Lite tag or label is used to do, to do that and to tag the images in the repository, as you'll see. So we run this, and it shouldn't take uh, too long to untar those uh, image files and load them into the local repository. So what we want to see at the end is a clean exit. And if we now look at our Docker images, you should see the three of them are loaded. And you see here that that local host just became part of the image name, tagged with CS Lite tag. And they were created two weeks ago because they were uh, the build from our component pack 6009 release. Next thing we need to do is update the uh, configuration files to provide information that is relevant to this particular environment. So there's a .env file in this script directory. And into this, we need to insert the host name of our connections environment. And the host name of the Nginx server, which we haven't yet installed, by the way. We'll be doing that in the next part of the series, but <clears throat> we can populate this information ready. And then uh, for each of the three services, we need to update the image, the image names with the corresponding, the correct corresponding image. So here, MW proxy, if you remember, was prefixed with localhost slash connections. And the same for App Registry Service, and the same for App Registry Client. Uh, those should be the only changes necessary in this ENV file. And this file contributes these values as environment variables uh, that our Docker Compose um, YAML file can consume. So you only need to set them once here and they can be reused in that configuration, as you will see. So let's save this. So that's the env file. And next we want to edit the docker compose file. So the entries in this file that start with the dollar sign and have the braces around them 
are those things that are set in the env file and this is how they're reused here so you'll see on the image line here uh, the image name is built up from both the app registry service image value we just edited and the app registry service version which hopefully you noticed had the cs light tag uh, value so that's how those things uh, turn into the actual reference of the image and under normal circumstances this would be deployed with proper uh, SSL certificates or TLS certificates um, but in the case of this lab environment that I'm working in the um, we have some self-signed certificates so I'm going to take uh, a copy of this and this value here no TLS reject unauthorized and I'm going to add it into the MW proxy environment section basically to tell the MW proxy service not to worry about the fact that they are self-signed certificates that we're using and I think that is all that needs to be modified here because many of the other uh, you'll see many of the other values are inherited from those values that we just edited in the env file things like the path to the to connections and the paths to end path to um, connections via nginx um, are referenced through corresponding environment variables here so let's save that right so we have the images in the Docker repository. We have the configuration updated to reference the correct images. We have the environment variables and everything set correctly. Uh, we should be in a position now to try um, and start some containers. Uh, let's just take a look in this scripts directory again. So there are some other shell scripts here, the update, they all start with the word update, and they can be used to start up the individual containers. Uh, for the three services or the update all script starts all of the three containers and if we take a look inside one of those there are pretty much single line scripts you'll see the command docker compose up uh, there is a corresponding command docker compose down and what that does is to bind the image with the information from docker compose uh, yaml file for that particular service to be able to create a, a runnable container uh, so in this case this one would launch the MW proxy container and the docker compose up and down commands operate in the foreground so when you run the docker compose up command uh, just from the command line the container the containers would load in the foreground and you would not be able to in uh, create any other commands you wouldn't be able to run any other commands you'd see the log output on the console and um, and so that they would be started kind of as, as a foreground task these scripts start the containers in the background and so those are the things that's the way you would run them uh, under normal circumstances so that you get control again of the command line um, and then you can ex inspect the log content um, using the docker logs command and we'll see that uh, shortly but just for the sake of starting something quickly I am going to run all three services in the foreground with the docker compose up command and all of the login is commingled but you will notice that it's color coded too so it's not the most readable output and this is the main reason you probably wouldn't want to run it uh, in this fashion but it's handy just to start things up quickly and see see what's going on um, and the other thing to note is that when you um, control C out of this because it's a foreground process it actually stops the running containers um, you'll also see some errors on the screen here relating to Mongo uh, we're not using Mongo and they they can be ignored they're innocuous uh, in in this case um, so the containers are, are no longer running we've stopped them just to show what runs from the script, let's run the update MW proxy. 
and we'll see it uh, start up the container. And if we run Docker PS, we should see our running container there. And uh, container ID, image name, how long it's been running for, and the uh, ports that it's listening on. In this case, the external port uh, is 3001 that you connect to from the outside, and internally, the, uh, the Node.js server is listening on port 3000. That's port mapping information. If we want to look at the logs for that container, we use docker logs command with the container ID. And not a lot in this one, it's just started. Uh, but you can see the log output there. <clears throat> if you wanted to follow the logs and watch them in real time as you submit requests, you would use the minus F parameter, uh, which is behaves basically like the tail minus F parameter does uh, on a file to be able to watch the output. Uh, if you run that, uh, you'll see it just pauses and is waiting to produce more output if there were requests coming in. So let's start up the other containers too. And for that, we can use the update all script. It will realize that one is already running and it will start up the other two. And now if we do Docker PS, we should see three running containers, uh, three container IDs, um, three sets of port mappings uh, that you can see here. For now, that's as much as we need to do. We have the containers loaded into Docker. We have the ENV and the Docker Compose YAML file configurations updated. We were able to run the containers. We were able to see log output. Uh, at this point, uh, we're finished with this part of the demo. With that, we conclude part three of the series on deploying Customizer Lite. In part four, we'll see what changes are required on the connections environment to properly integrate the Customizer Lite services. This was David Bell, Senior Development Manager at HL Software. Goodbye for now, and I look forward to speaking to you again in part four.